Good morning. Welcome to worship as we gather to thank the Lord for his steadfast love for his wonderful works to humankind. Please stand for the call to worship. Listen, all who are fleeing from the Holy One, God is calling us. God has called us together. Oh, give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God is eager to put loving arms around us. God is waiting to satisfy our hunger and thirst. God fills the hungry with good things. Our thirsty souls are overflowing. Set your minds on things that are above. Put to death your earthly disobedience. God leads us to a new identity, to new life. We seek renewal in the image of our Creator. Please remain standing to sing page 359. You may be seated. <clears throat> Please join me in the opening prayer. Loving God, 
in whose arms we have found our identity. Come among us to direct our faltering steps in the ways you would have us go. Teach us to walk with Christ through the distractions that beckon us in other directions. Turn our vain striving into meaningful service, our foolish greed to the fulfillment of sharing, our confusion to clarity of vision, that we might worship you truly this hour. Amen. Again, welcome to the Sunday worship. Besides the announcements in the bulletin, I've been asked just to review a couple. Number one, the office would love for you to sign the friendship pad located at the end of your uh, pew. The office is not getting complete information as we have not been signing it. Uh, secondly, don't forget the office needs your photos to update um, our directory and the details are in your bulletin. And lastly, remember choirs, there is a sign up sheet in the um, garden room for the picnic. Pastor. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. As you're aware that uh, I'm going to go to South Korea uh, for the mission trip. So I, I know there's many people, they are wondering how and why. That's why I want to explain to you briefly about the, my trip. So Korean Methodist Church uh, marked the year 2015 as a one, 130 years anniversary the, since Henry Appengeller the first Methodist missionary to Korea arrived with his wife on Easter Sunday in 1885. And he was from the first United Methodist Church in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And he founded one of the, the first Methodist church in Korea, as well as the schools for the boys. And also he translated the Bible into the Korean. That's why like, I'm the really like the honor and privilege to be a pastor of the, this Eastern Pennsylvania Conference, the same conference with uh, Henry Appengella. So he, this Henry Appengella built the Native Methodist Church in Korea, and this Native Methodist Church in ancient Korea invited the brothers and sisters of the United Methodist Church for the mission trip. And this mission trip is evangelism focused and work in partnership with the Native Methodist Church. So, so now I'm the leader and I'm also a guider and also I'm the translator. So the, our team consists of the two district superintendent from the West District and East District and the three pastors and three youth members, including my son, Brian, and uh, he will go with me. And also th there's, there are the three uh, lay members. So I'm leaving tonight, 6.45 at, at, the, at the Philly airport. And they're like uh, coming back on August 21st. So please uh, keep this mission trip in your prayer. If we have any other like uh, the question or any additional information you needed to, please ask me after the service. Thank you. At this time, let's greet each other as the children are dismissed for Sunday school. Okay. I'm so glad you're here, Cindy. Uh, Peace be with you. <laughs> we'll have to have you for dinner when you get back from your trip. I love pictures. Yeah, that'd be nice.
As we return to our seats, our next hymn is Freely, Freely, page 389. Uh, as we go to the time of prayer, uh, please lift up those who need our prayer. Uh, let me uh, say the name on our blue team for the prayer concern. Bill and Barbara Snee, I believe that Mr. Bill discharged from the hospital and he's at home right now, but he is still the suffering with his uh, weakening his heart and kidney. Please keep praying for them. And Dorothy Dodd and Doris Williams, and Thomas Jenkins, Ed and Vani Engel, Andy Parker, and Penny Brinton. Uh, the Penny Brinton's surgery is, was really successful. Praise the Lord. But please keep, in, uh, keep her in your prayer too. So please uh, name for the people who need our prayers. Oh, I'm sorry, can you tell me again? Cindy, Doris, John, Joe, and Claire, Mike, and Cheryl, Alyssa, and George. Mm, I'm sorry, can you tell us again? Alicia. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we offer thanks for this day and for the opportunity to be here together in worship. During this time, may we be able to put aside the concerns of our daily lives, let go of all the demand that crowd upon us, and simply be present here to your spirit and your word. Gracious Lord, we pray that your healing hand and life-giving spirit might touch those people that we have named aloud in this place before our brother and sisters and those we have held in our heart. We bring to you our concern for the peace in our community and the world. 
we bring to you our personal concern for ourselves and our families. Lord, you taught us to ask, seek, and knock. We ask you to grant healing to those who were named. We seek you for the release of your power into their lives. We are knocking for the blessing of the physical and spiritual wholeness. Lord, you are full of mercy and compassion for them. They are suffering and they need your healing, Lord. In the Bible time, just as the people who brought the blind man of Bethsaida, we bring them to you, Lord. We lift them up to you in prayer. Lord, humbly we ask that you restore them to health again. And also, Lord, some people need healing of a different kind, emotional and spiritual. Some are facing family problems. Some are weary with the struggles of life and seek the assurance that this will someday pass. And others face financially difficulties and make a difficult decision for themselves and their families. Let your love and presence be felt as they express their concern. By your grace, Lord, we ask you to reveal to them your clear direction. Lord, show mercy upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please arise. Let us affirm our Christian faith together by saying Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of a body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The scripture today is from Matthew 10, 24 to 33. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear for them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the heads of your, excuse me, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord.
Amen. Thank you, James. Jesus loves us. Amen for that. Uh, who is your uh, role model? Who have you looked up to and admired and hoped to be like? Whose life has touched yours in such a way that you will always be grateful because life is so much better because of that person's influence? Three old men were sitting on a bench in Florida. When a reporter approached them, I wonder if you three would be willing to do an interview and tell us your secret to a long life, the reporter asked. And the three men agreed. The first man, first old man said, I never drank alcohol, I never smoked the tobacco, and I have been married to the same woman for 75 years. Wow, that's really remarkable, said the reporter. And how old are you? Oh, I am 95, the man said. The second man was then asked his secret to a long life. I drank on occasion, I smoked, but not often, and I dated some. And how old are you, asked the reporter. Oh, I'm 90, the old man said. Then the reporter asked the third man about his secret to a long life. I dated every woman that would go out with me. I drank until I passed out, and I smoked the three pack of the cigarette a day. Wow, the reporter was even more impressed. Wow, how old are you? The man said, I am 35. Ah, uh, it can be tough to find a good role model, right? <laughs> the Charles Barkley was quoted one time as saying, I don't want to be a role model. But people who are in the spotlight do not have much choice. So people will look to them for the good example of how to live life. But it's not just the famous people who are influential, the role model. It's been estimated that even the most introverted person influences at least 10,000 people in a lifetime. 10,000 people. You can guess where I am headed with this. You are a role model. Like the Charles Barkley, it does not matter whether you want to be a role model or not. You are, simply, because you exist. You live in this world, and you interact with other people. According to research, research result says that the majority of the United States teenagers tend to be quite like their parents when it comes to the religion. They tend to share the similar belief, and they tend to be situated in the same general religious tradition, and they tend to attend the religious service with one or both parents. Therefore, most parents normally exalt significant influence in forming the religious and spiritual lives of their adolescent children. Let me give you an example. Here is the interesting the comparison. Max Jukes and Jonathan Edward live in New York at the same time but they were very different people. Max did not believe in Christ nor in Christian training. He would not take his children to church even when, when his children asked to go. He has had 1,026 descendants. Among the descendants, 300 spend time behind the bar for an average of 13 years each and 190 were prostitute, and 680 were alcoholic. The Jonathan Edward was a, a well-known preacher. He was committed to Christ and made sure his children were in church with him on Sunday. And he has had 929 descendants, and of these 430s, were ministers, and 86 became 
university professors, and 13 became university president, and 75 authored good books, and seven was elected to the U.S. Congress, and one was vice president of the United States. Like Jonathan Edward, and uh, like the Max Jukes, the choice that you make influence other people, not just your family, but others as well. So the question is not, are you a role model, but what are you modeling? I think for the Christian, there are two basic possibilities for what we are modeling. Either we are mirroring the culture in which we live, or we are modeling a life of grace as we follow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. A United Methodist Church pastor, Mike Slaughter, that says that we live in a culture of ungrace. Do you agree about that? We live in a culture of ungrace. That's the inter interesting word. What it suggests is that we live in an unforgiving environment, a world that put its value on appearance or the, our performance. It is the perfectionistic and judgmental world where the failure is to just one slip away. From the grade school, we haven't taught it at the shape of our body as well as our the ability to figure big in terms of our value. If we do not measure up to the expectation of others, we are nothing. If our behavior is less than perfect, we are on the bad list. When you live in a culture of ungrace, you don't even have to have a three strikes before you are out. You are out from the get-go. And all of life is a scramble to find your way in. So when you live in a culture of ungrace, it is so easy. It is so easy to observe a negative attitude toward the people and pass it on. The families are really good at that, right? So Mary was having a bad day and tough day and had to stretch herself out on a couch to do a bit of the, what she thought was well-deserved complaining and self-pitying. And she complained to her mother and brother, oh, nobody loves me. The whole world hates me. And her brother, who was busy playing the game, hardly looked up at her when he said, Oh, Mary, that's not true. Some people don't even know you. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> so there was a convict who managed to escape from prison. And his escape was the lead item on the 6 o'clock news. So not to be captured, he ran through the field and the back road until he finally reached his home. When he got to the house, he rang the bell, and his wife answered the door and screamed at him, You lousy bum! Where have you been? You escaped more than six hours ago. <laughs> In the culture of the ungrace, there is no escape. No matter how hard you try, there will always be expectation out there that will hit you upside the head when you the least expect it. The end result for the most people living in the culture of ungrace is a very low self-esteem. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'm worthless. And nobody cares. And that attitude begins to direct the course of our life and also the life of those we touch. But listen to what God says. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. You are of the more value than many sparrows. The bottom line with God is this. I love you, and you matter to me. That is the essence 
of the God's culture of grace. God knows that we are imperfect. Listen to the word that Paul used to describe us in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 11. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for the righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. So did you hear that? Paul described that we are weak, sinners, ungodly, and enemies of God. These are uncomfortable words. The word which could easily send us back down the path that, I, that says, I am not good at anything. But here's what Paul is trying to communicate to us. On our own, we are quite unable to live up to what God expects and wants. But God does not set a value on us based on our performance or on looks or on what we have accomplished. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It is God's nature to love what God has made. And we are God's creation made in God's image. Someone once said that God does not make junk, right? That's true. Indeed true. God does not make junk. And God loves the people God has made. God loves you. And you really matter to God. I think I can finish my sermon at this point. That's the main message today. God loves you, and you matter to God. Many years ago, I learned a song from the Vacation Bible School, which became the, one of my favorite songs. It was, I'm Not Forgotten. It's like this. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. I am not forgotten. He knows my name. How powerful that is. And our children learn that song. I'm not forgotten. I'm not forgotten at all. He knows my name. He knows my everything. We call that amazing grace. He knows my name. And here's the proof. Paul says, Christ died for you. And he did it before you did anything to deserve, before you even knew you needed. I believe that Paul intended for us to take this very personally. Jesus died for you, spe specifically for you, because God loves you, and you matter to God. So into our culture of ungrace, God pours the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we are encouraged to drink deeply until our thirst is satisfied, and we begin to see ourselves as a people who are loved by God. So those who embrace God's grace become the God's ambassador in this world. The church, the church is like the extension of the heaven outpost or branch office. Or maybe you could relate to it as God's factory outlet. Whatever image works for you, please use it. The church is a piece of God's kingdom that is the design to bring God's grace to the world of ungrace. We are the people who have begun to both understand and embrace the love and grace of God. That means it is now our job to be a role model, not to mirror the ungrace of our world, but to freely 
distribute the grace and love of God. Because we are salt of the earth. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. That means we will treat one another and everyone else we meet the way God has treated us. With grace, we will treat them as a person whom God loves, as the person for whom Christ died. That will look very different from ungrace of our world. It was Mother's Day, and a young family was sitting down at the table in a nice restaurant. And the kids were excited because they did not eat out often. As soon as the server came to take their order, young Billy jumped up on his chair and shouted, Oh, I want to have a hot dog and chocolate melt. The mom scolded Billy, sat him back down, and then proceeded to order him a sensible meal with the, the roast beef and the mushed potato. When they got all the way around the table and server turned back to Billy and said, and you will have a hot dog and a chocolate malt. And the whole family was stunned as the server walked away. And Bill said, hey, she thinks I am real. So in a dog eat dog, the world, the where danger lies everywhere, the church is called to be a safe heaven a place where someone can come and be related as a real person like a Billy, a person who mattered to us because he or she mattered to God. I believe that. Everybody want to create that safe and welcoming environment where the people will want to come and want to stay. In this sense, it's your job to pass that welcome on. One of the easiest things to happen in the church is to grow in word. We like each other, and we feel a certain cozy family feeling, and we want it to stay that way. So unconsciously, we begin to put up the barrier that feel like a put off to the people who come to visit. Please, don't let that happen here. Please don't let that happen here. You have received the grace and love of God. And you have been given a warm sense of welcome in being here. So please pass it on. And also please don't forget, God loves you. And you matter to God so much. Let us pray together. Oh Lord our God who create us in your own image and likeness, Lord, how absolutely necessary your grace is for us, both to begin a good work and to preserve until we accomplish it. Without grace, we can do nothing, but we can do all things in you when your grace strengthens us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please turn to the page 12 in your hymnal where you can find the word uh, on the screen. Oh, the offering first, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah, we, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Okay, so life uh, does not consist in the abundance of our possessions, and all that we currently possess will someday belong to others. We have uh, the privilege in this life to do good with all that God has entrusted to us. So we bring a portion now to be blessed by God in the work of our church and Christ church here and other places. Let us give back to God joyfully. All shares, please come forward.
Phoenix will rise. Please be seated. Christ our Lord, invite his table all who love him, who honestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet the sinners. That proved God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let's move to the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, and he took the bread and gave thanks to you, and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciple and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of a faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us. And the gather here and those the gift and bread and wine. 
make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior taught us, so let, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This table is for all of us, near and far, high and low, east and west and north and south. This table is for all of us, but it is not our table. This is God's table for all of us, and it's the table of grace. So come and partake of Lord's Supper. You are welcome, and you are invited, and you are called. Come, let us share this meal together. Please kneel down. Mr. Ba, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. I think you have to go this way. Okay. Noah, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Evan, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Yeah. Bonnie, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Arlene, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Chris, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Joe, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Mr. Paul, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Mr. Tom, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Lisa, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Tori, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. This is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. And this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. Please arise. Please receive the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Please go back to sit.
you are able, please kneel down. This is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. And this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. And this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. And this is the body of Jesus Christ for you. And this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs> this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. This is body of Jesus Christ given for you, Jada. This is body of Jesus Christ given for you. And this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. 당신이 위해 주신 그리스도의 몸입니다. Yeah, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. 당신을 위해 주신 그리스도의 몸입니다. 예진이를 위해 주신 그리스도의 몸입니다. Please arise and receive the God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit always be with you. Please go back to sit. If you're able, please kneel down. This is body of Jesus Christ given for you. This is a body of Jesus Christ given for you. <laughs> Becky, this is a body of Jesus Christ given for you. Mr. Mike, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. This is body of Jesus Christ given for you. This is body of Jesus Christ given for you. You are the child of God too. This is body of Jesus Christ given for you. <laughs> Nancy, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. Lucy, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. And this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. This is body of Jesus Christ given for you. Naomi, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. Tom, Jim, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. Mr. Stack, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. Please arise and receive the God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit always be with you. Amen. Thanks to James. James, this is the body of Jesus Christ given for you. This, uh, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. Michelle, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. Cindy, this is body of Jesus Christ given for you. This is blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. This is blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Lisa and Michelle. Let us pray together.
Thank you, Christ, for this feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into the world to live into the vision God has laid on our heart. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, to forgive as we have been forgiven, to love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please all right, let's sing together, Amazing Grace 378 in your hymnal, where you can find the word on the screen. Go in peace, love and care for one another in the name of Christ. May God grant to you a heart that is open to his mercies and the ears to hear that which is his doing and the eyes to see. And may the Lord pour down upon you the bread that satisfy and equip you by the power of the Holy Spirit to share what you have received with one another, both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>